All right then, let's begin. Hey, welcome to our celebration of student success here. They reflect on Katie's CCI journey in preparation to go to Northwest High School and make a difference. Northwestern Three questions she's gonna answer for us is, who does she aspire to be a teacher? What is Miss Smith all about? What has she done in her past to prepare for this moment? And really, specifically, how are we prepared for this 15 weeks? Afterwards, we'll have 15 minutes or so of questions where we'll rotate from our online audience to our face-to-face -face audience to the teacher education panel as we get to dig deeper. Katie, the show's yours. Thank you. So how was everybody's drive, bus, or walk in this morning with this wonderful weather? Great. Interesting, I'm sure. Okay. So as Dr. Foster said, this, is, this presentation will give you the story of me and my student teaching pre uh, prep and journey and future preparation to uh, teach successfully both as a student teacher and then in my future years um, at whatever program I end up in. So as Dr. Foster said, the first question is, who do I aspire to be as a teacher? So to start with, I'm going to say, give a brief description of my philosophy, which is um, that first page you have there, um, and my infographic for it is on the back. In short, my teaching philosophy is I want my classroom to be both a comforting and welcoming environment. If a student doesn't feel comfortable and welcome in it, they won't have the prime environment to learn in. I also want my classroom to be fun and interactive. Sometimes PowerPoints are necessary, but I also believe in hands-on learning. A student that can physically get their hands on something will be able to better understand it than if they just read or hear about it. I also want my classroom to build everlasting friendships. One of the most important things that Ag did, did for me was I found friends, everlasting friends, that I still talk to on a day-to-day -day basis and who help support me in my life choices. And I feel like that's an important environment for any classroom to have. So for my classroom, there's always, of course, classroom management. So I have three posters here that I made. And I'll just briefly go over them. So my classroom expectations. Students, as students, we will be productive, be present, be willing to learn, be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and of course I always want the students to be themselves. Because if they can't be themselves in my classroom, then obviously I'm doing something wrong. Some classroom procedures. In this class, we as students will do our work as asked, be respectful of ourselves, other students, and the teacher. We will be quick and considerate for errands run during class time. And lastly, of course, there's consequences if you don't follow um, my guidelines. So the first is we review expectations and have a verbal warning. Second, verbal warning if you make the mistake again. Third is after school detention. And the fourth one is a call home or an office referral, which I hope to never reach that step. So this is my ideal program. Um, as for my personal ideal program, um, I would like to have an introduction to ag class to every um, freshman or maybe uh, first person entering ag um, so they could be of any grade. Um, we'll take the intro to ag class that would cover a variety of topics, um, anything from plants, animals, to even some mechanics, um, and so on. Um, and then I would, I offered a plant track and a animal track, or uh, I'm sorry, yes, an animal track. Um, the plant track would consist of agronomy and a plant science class, and the animal track would consist of wildlife and ENR, environmental natural resources, and an animal science class, and then the senior year would be a culmination of a leadership and an SAE class. For my comprehensive lab integration plan, um, which I'll pass around, so I had to design a facility, um, and for my facility, I decided to design a pole barn. Um, my pole barn is actually very similar to the one I came from in my high school. Um, I really um, thought my setup was 
pretty good. Um, so it has rabbit pens, um, which for each rabbit pen, there's um, three pens to um, a section. Um, so there's 30 pens there. Um, and then three multi-purpose pens um, that can serve whatever you can have within the year, um, such from pigs to goats to calves, whatever you choose to have, um, as well as access to pasture. Um, and then there's a water spigot and a storage area for the things such as wheelbarrow shovels, um, whatever else you would want to have in your, um, like the extra water bottles or such. And then we had to design a $15 project. And I like things that are, um, that are usable, um, th not something that's just going to sit on a shelf and look pretty. So I made a fluids box for a vehicle. And I actually made sure that the dimensions would um, sit comfortably like on a floor, on a back seat, um, as well as you can see it fits pretty comfortably all the bottles. There's a brake fluid bottle in here as well as a towel and a funnel. Um, and this hole is actually big enough to even fit um, the big bottle of brake fluid, but I don't carry the big bottle, so just the little ones in there. But um, it fits all three bottles, so here's there's the oil, the power steering, and the transmission. And then, like I said, the brake fluid's in there. And I'll pass this around. Here, we'll start this here. So, to any good program, it has the three circle model. So, as I have been stating, the classroom instruction and what I would want in my program. But the other part, the other two parts, um, one part is the FFA. And I believe that any student um, should have the opportunity, which with Pennsylvania becoming a, that has the option to becoming an affiliative state, gives every student the opportunity to participate in FFA activities. And hopefully my class, well, my classroom will um, align with some of the available CDEs um, or career development events which students can then choose to compete in in the FFA portion and possibly take home medals or just realize that they really enjoy the subject and want to pursue it further. And then in the pursuing it further, they can do that in the SAE portion where they complete record books and uh, take a, a uh, independent study um, of the subject. Uh, that they are, have an interest in. So for example, to walk you through these three circles, if I had a, in my plant science class, I talked about floral arrangements and the student really enjoyed it, they can compete in the floral arrangement CDE. And they were like, yeah, I definitely want to do this on my own. For their SAE, they could work for a flower shop or even design or um, make their own business doing flowers for weddings or whatever. Um, so that's how the three circle model would play a role in my program. And then I have a recruitment video that me and a fellow cohort member did. So again, I just wanted to stress the point, in, um, which is why uh, we made our recruitment video this way, because a lot of people think ag is just animals and plants, um, when in reality, reality it's not. There's a lot of outlets that ag feeds into, whether people know it or not. Um, 
so that's why we did it um, so if you're sitting in your homeroom that might not be the ag homeroom and you see this you'd be like oh I guess maybe I should do that intro class because I could do that job if I find an interest in ag um, even though you, people might not consider it an ag job um, I knew that wasn't going to play so my community based unit of instruction is hang on sorry it's not going to play okay well it's not going to play but that doesn't matter it's fine um, so my community based unit of instruction is in my wildlife unit and it's um, based around chronic wasting with if the video was a picture um, it was a video of a deer that had chronic wasting because a lot of people don't necessarily know what chronic wasting looks like um, but basically a deer that has chronic wasting um, they basically just lose their mind um, so they don't walk straight they can run in circles and they just look funny but anyway chronic wasting is spreading from the south of Pennsylvania north um, so actually where I'll be student teaching at least to my latest knowledge it hasn't reached there yet but it's important that if it does people recognize it so that we can control it early um, so that's why I, I thought it would be good to do this community-based unit in with my wildlife class um, but basically um, it's going to start with work I'm going to talk about it a little bit um, chronic wasting to the class and then we're going to have a game commission person come in and give a more in-depth detail of chronic wasting more up-to-date information um, than probably what I would know um, and then the kids are going to make a either going to make um, like a presentation or like um, flyers that then they're going to go to um, I'm not sure if it's the 4-H club or if it's a school club but the, an archery club um, and present to them because um, he said that it's pretty they're all pretty avid hunters um, which is the people you want to reach out to because they're going to be the people in the field um, hunting and seeing how the deer are acting um, so that I actually really look forward to that unit in particular so the second question, what experiential education opportunities have I engaged in to become a better agricultural educator? So just um, to start with, I've been here for now three, and well, I've been here for a year and a half. I did two years at Berks campus, um, but my AE courses that I took here that I felt like best um, help prepare me for my student teaching was AE 412 um, which is a methods class that basically we learned how to how to be teachers and teach to with lessons and stuff like that how to write them um, 413 which is all about program planning which there's a lot that goes into a program <laughs> more than and I come from a program and it, there's a lot that I didn't know that happened behind the scenes um, and the last one was uh, AE 350 which is um, teaching methods with ag mechanics um, which really um, was interesting to learn um, only not only because I have a particular interest in certain ag mechanics but um, just the, the there's a way to teach ag mechanics and there's a way not to do it so it was cool to learn how to teach um, a class like that um, some other courses that I feel prepared me um, I took plant 220 which is gardening for fun and profit I took that here um, I actually also TA the class this semester I took it last fall um, and in that class we did a home design project which I think is something I could very easily take back to a high school program where I basically had the freedom to design my future home and its landscape however I chose to um, and I would have the example with me but um, she really liked mine so I let her keep it so I don't have physically have it because my professor has it um, but it was a really interesting thing so I actually took I could have done it I could have just done it however I wanted but I did the research and I used all native plants in my landscape so nothing was nothing was from outside of Pennsylvania besides maybe like some crops but other than that um, they were all all my trees and so forth flowers were native to PA another class was my edu my complete competing rights issues in American ed American education which was my education theory class um, I actually took that at Berks 
so it was a little different from the people who took it here. But I learned a lot in that class as far as what goes into being a teacher and like the certain requirements of a teaching degree. Um, so I found that class really valuable. Another class which I took here was Wildlife and Fisheries Conservation, WFS 209. Um, because of my other, other interest in wildlife, um, that class just was really interesting to me. I learned a lot more about wildlife um, and that helped me with um, my internship too um, as far as knowing how to answer certain questions about how wildlife interact with each other um, and so on. So um, certifications that I've gotten to help prepare me to um, either teach, um, certify students um, or certifications that have helped me become more literate in content areas um, or just for safety reasons such as first aid, um, CPR, and AED certification, um, national safe tractor and machinery operation certification which I got, um, that's one of the ones that I got certified as a community instructor so I can actually certify students in that in the future. Um, I also took three um, curriculum certifications while I was here. Um, pro I took Project Wild, Project Wet, and Project Food, Land, and People. I'll actually pass one of the books around. But um, I really liked um, the certification classes. Um, I definitely have pulled out some of the units or some of the lessons to use um, in my future classroom. So, and I also hope to seek out, there's a bunch more um, different curriculums that um, come from the same origin of, of these and I'd really like to pursue them as well in the future. So some professional development I've done to help. Um, I went to PWE Summer Conference at Gradelphia this summer. Um, got to meet lots of Pennsylvania educators and supporters. Um, and also just last week we were in Nashville um, for the NAA conference where we got to meet people from all across the states. Um, and I, in particular when I was there, I participated in the FAST symposium, um, which was for pre-service teachers. So I got to meet other pre-service teachers from across the country um, and network with them and just network with people in general. And that was a great experience. Um, I still talk to some of those people from Nashville that I met. So some relevant experiences just from my personal life. Um, so I grew up on a family hobby farm, um, which that picture there on the far right is a picture of my baby girl, Scarlett. Um, she's one of two miniature horses I have at home, um, as well as other various animals that we have. Um, and like I said before, I do come from an FFA chapter. Uh, I was in it for four years and I did get my American degree, which is um, what that plaque there on the chair is. Um, I also went to Costa Rica for nine days in high school, which is where this is a capuchin monkey that for two days joined us for breakfast. Um, we were all over Costa Rica and I learned a lot about um, different environments in the, in the tropical environment. Um, and I just felt like that had a, that trip in general just had a really big impact on my life. I also went to the Penn State domestic study away this past summer. For a week and a half we went to, well we traveled to Wisconsin um, and we met with different schools and different industries and learned a lot about how, how diverse certain programs can be from each other and that's not necessarily people learn, diff depending on where you are, you teach differently. Um, and that's what that meme in the middle is from. Um, and like I said, I had an internship this past summer with a wildlife center, a rehab center. Um, and basically I helped uh, rehab wildlife that came in injured, um, also helped to release quite a few of them. And one of the things that I personally um, really enjoyed was uh, towards the end I got to help with a presentation at one of the local fairs. Um, that's my friend Cookie there. She's a barred owl and I gave a like 15, probably more like 10 uh, presentation on, she's a permanent resident of ours. Um, she came in really injured and she's actually totally blind. 
um, and I could give you her, her, sto her whole story, but I won't. Um, but also my director from the Wildlife Center, um, she's a writer, so she um, tries to get the word out because there's not necessarily a lot out there about how to properly handle wildlife that comes in. Um, that book I just handed out is one of her books she wrote, and I actually also used some of her information um, to write my wildlife lessons. Um, wildlife is really interesting, and I actually, um, got enrolled in her uh, curriculum. She wrote up um, cla like classes per se online, um, and I have taken some of the classes, and I plan to take more. Um, it's a really in strong interest of mine. Um, and again, along with the wildlife, for nine years, so from fourth to twelfth grade, I competed in Envirothon. So some uh, training or experiences, not necessarily training, I've had um, to handle diversity. Um, I had to complete IEP observation hours, um, which I completed with Mr. Wallace over at CPI. He's a masonry teacher. And it was really interesting to see how um, to even students that have IEPs can handle something such, such as a shop environment very easily. Um, also on DSA, we visited Jeremy Grove, who he works for a very um, a city school in Cleveland, Ohio, and we also had an LGBTQ panel on DSA, um, where we talked to four or five different um, teachers um, who come from various experiences and lifestyles, and we learned um, how they've handled things and how we can be better at handling things. Um, also at NWE we had a presenter, Dr. Field Grove, who ta talked to us all about diversity and how we need to be aware of how we handle certain things in, in our classrooms. And then lastly, um, when I was in Costa Rica, um, we visited a school for a day. That's Las Brisas. And basically we worked with the students, um, excuse me, and uh, ba basically, in Costa Rica, it's one building classroom. So there was seven grades, I believe. I could be wrong in that school. And it was literally <laughs> probably about as big as this room. And there was like 15 kids in, well, not all of those are kids. That's some of, that's, that's our entire group. So there's a lot of us in there too. But there's maybe 15 to 20 kids in that one room learning all different grade levels. So the last question, how am I prepared to maximize my student teaching internship opportunity? Um, so I'm just going to play a little bit of this video that talks about my cooperating center um, where I'll be teaching in spring. So that's a little bit about my cooperating center. Um, the six hour drive reference for, for anybody that doesn't know me, um, I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is like the bottom right corner of the state. And I, in the Erie's of course, all the way in the top left. So it's a really long drive for me from home on a good day. Um, so the chapter 339 evaluation of um, Northwestern High School, um, the, one of the biggest things that he um, has, which really just um, makes his program shine, um, is he's very involved in the community. He does various um, activities. I couldn't even list them all um, within the community. And in turn, because he's so involved in the community, his community really supports him. Um, and he, um, his parents will just show up and be like, what do you need? 
um, he, his parent, his parent, his relationship with his students' parents are just amazing. Um, and I've met quite a few of them already, and they will literally bend over backwards for this man. Um, he has done such a great um, job with the kids and the program in general. Um, so this is my uh, units I will be teaching um, along with my bell schedule. So I'll pretty much be have a class every day until the very end um, is my planning period. Um, but I'll be teaching an agri-science class, which technically I'll be teaching twice, um, an environmental and natural resource class, a horticulture class, a landscape class, the leadership class, and a large animal class, which is a case um, curriculum class. Um, I'll be teaching everything from food science, animal science, plants, wildlife, biofuels, public speaking. The only thing I'm not really teaching, Dr. Ewing, I'm sorry, is, is ag mechanics. It's the one thing I'm not, and I don't really have. I will do tools though, so tools, but not necessarily working with the tools. So organization and the methods that have best worked for me. Um, as you can see, I have many, many binders. Um, I like to try and keep things separate from each other. Um, I also have had very sticky notes around my apartment, well, more like my desk, um, that I just write. If it's just something random that I just need to remember, I'll write it on a sticky note and put it somewhere. Um, and so I remember it. Um, if it's like a list of things, related things, I do lists. Um, I have, have had quite a few of those. Um, I also have a date book. If it's like an event or something I need to remember or like birthday party, wedding, whatever I need to remember. Usually this is more for my personal life, um, but I keep a date book. As you can see, it's been quite full. Um, I get one of those every year and it's usually used, I use it a lot. Um, so my personal reflections of my strengths and, weak and points of improvement. Um, I feel that I have a really good growth mindset. I really enjoy going to things such as NWE and participating in workshops and learning or expanding on content I already know. Um, I also feel like I'm really a compassionate person and I've been told that I am. Um, I always like to, I always put other people first usually. Um, and I feel like I have a lot of enthusiasm for, I do have a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. Um, some points of improvement um, for myself. Um, time management is a, a thing I need to work on. Um, 42 minutes goes by really fast, especially when you don't necessarily have the experience to work within 42 minutes. Um, I also um, I have some content knowledge, but you can always improve and learn more. Um, so like I said, the growth mindset and going to workshops and learning more of that content. Um, and I also feel like I'm nice to a fault along with that compassion thing. Um, sometimes I'm too nice for my own good. So I just want to thank everybody for coming. I really hope you learned a lot about me and I know you all su will support me next semester as I go out soon teaching. Um, just thanks for coming. All right, let's show a round of applause. Okay, you want you to breathe in? Breathe I'm in. good. Breathe out. You did a great job. Thank you. And so uh, we're excited to ask a few questions. Of course. Okay. So we will rotate between the face-to-face -face audience, online audience, teacher education. Who in our audience today has a question they'd like to ask? Be courageous. You can ask it. Thank you. You said that you hope to keep on improving on your knowledge as you go forward. So since you're teaching specific classes, are you planning on uh, learning anything like over winter break to help prepare for those classes? Well, yes. Um, so the one class I'm teaching is a, uh, it's the landscape class. It's a pesticide certification class. Um, so the pesticide, for order to students to be certified in pesticide certification, I 
there's specific things I need to teach to be sure that they can pass because um, it's not like a personal exam it's the exam from like the state um, to be certified um, so there's uh, like a prescribed class, I guess that I can, I don't have to do it, but um, it's interesting to me, and as well as it will make me a better teacher to make sure I'm teaching them the correct things. Um, so over winter break, I will be reading and listening to the videos of how to best teach pesticide certification. Tiffany, which question would you like to draw from our online audience? All right, so I'm gonna pull one from Facebook. This is from Callie Curley. She would like to know, what do you think will be the most challenging part of transitioning from student to student teacher? I think that would fall along the lines of the compassion thing. And I just, um, I, the hardest thing for me would be maybe not trying to get too personal with the students. Not that I don't want them to know things about my life, but um, you just gotta remember to draw that line and that you are a guide to them, not their best friend. Well stated, they need great teachers, not more friends. From our teacher education panel, Dr. Kurt. Katie, I think if I remember back to your ideal program um, course alignment, it looked actually mirrored very similar maybe to what uh, you're going to go in this semester where there's a lot of diversity in courses. Can you talk to me about the importance of offering different types of courses to your students and why and how you're going to manage your time effectively so that you're able to plan for seven preps, six preps in a year? Of course. Um, so it is quite similar. Um, I would say, however, that um, Albion's program is definitely um, a lot more plant-oriented than mine would be. Um, but I definitely see the value in making sure you teach a little bit everything, which is um, would be the intro, the intro of the ag class is where I would try and cover as much as I could because it's one class dedicated to everything. Um, I wish I could offer a lot more classes. In fact, I had a whole nother pathway that I deleted because I was like, if I go into one, a one person program, I mean, that was already four or five, six, seven classes. Um, but so in the intro to ag class, I would cover everything from plants to animals to agronomy, ag business, shop. So that's where I would try and cover my basis as far as giving students a taste of everything. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Kristen, you ready? Yeah. Um, what subject are you most confident in your ability to teach? I would say most, um, probably animal science. Um, also, again, with um, wildlife, I also have a really strong interest in that. So both of those classes I feel I will be pretty strong in. Great life experiences for wildlife, too. I look forward to incorporating that. Thank Our you. online audience, Ms. Mora. Yes, we have two questions from Zoom, so I'm going to take the one from Dr. Joshua Rice first. And he wants to know, are there ways that you can ensure that all youth have an SAE who are in your program? And how would you ensure that you do not have the financial means or required facilities can still have an SAE? So actually, I just attended a workshop um, at National, um, sorry, NAAE, um, which was about the foundational SAE that every student um, is should be required to have, um, which basically doesn't, it's all about building your own personal repertoire. It's not necessarily about um, pursuing something as such as um, an animal project or a plant project or a mechanics project. It's about your personal growth. Um, so that's a very um, simple SAE that any student can complete even if they don't have um, facilities per se. Good, Katie. Thank you. Of course, Dr. Ross is the Director of Extension in uh, State 4-H here in Pennsylvania and was an ag teacher in Maryland prior to that position his past. Dr. Russ, on our panel, soon to be teacher at Decatur University of Kentucky, what questions do you have for Dr. Ms. Smith? Nice job, Katie. Thank you. So my question is, you is as you look at your professional development as a master educator, what is one specific pedagogical skill you are going to focus on developing? I 
I would say probably inquiry <laughs> because um, when we did the lab with Dr. Foster, um, I actually got the compliment that my lab was one of the was really helpful to students who hadn't that were in my lab. Um, they didn't really understand, but then they went through my lab and they're like, "Oh, this makes so much more sense." Um, and I feel like it's just that's really hard to just understand until you've really done it. Um, so I really hope to take some of the lessons I've written even now and m as I get more comfortable in my content be able to make them more inquiry for students because I feel like that autonomy is really important for students. Why don't you help out some of those watching and listening and knowing that you've gone through all these workshops at NAAE and your preparation. What's one tip you would give an educator on how to use inquiry more? Just one. Effective questioning. Ah, good job. Thank you. Well it's all not necessarily about giving answers, it's about asking the right questions in return. Okay. How about from the audience? Give me a moment. Everybody's avoiding eye contact. That's good. We'll go to the online audience. This question is from Macy. And she said she would love to hear more about what skills students would be gaining or using in order to create the fluids box that you like your project that can be. Well, Katie's thinking and responding to that. Macy Fisher is a member of her cohort. We'll be student teaching at Seelands Grove. So the skills that students would utilize to make the box. Um, so it, of course there's a lot of different cuts to make for the box. So there'd be a lot of different tools they could use. Um, in fact, in the uh, in that comprehensive lab um, thing, I had I think I used four different saws. I'm not sure. Sure, it's definitely three, if not four, um, such as the miter saw, hand saw, uh, table saw, um, and. The, um, and also, so the bottom of the box is actually internal. Um, so they would have to use math skills because the board that I bought, it was an eight inch board, but since the bottom is internal, they need to, would have to compensate for that loss um, for that inner piece um, in order so it's flush with the top of the box. Um, yeah. Dr. Ewing. Yes, Katie, in your presentation, you showed us your recruitment video. Mm -hmm. Well done. Thank you. Um, and you mentioned that you might, you know, a student may see that in their homework. Uh, what other ways do you see um, this recruitment video or another recruitment video that maybe you or your students develop down the road being utilized in, other than maybe in a homework situation? Um, so, for example, if um, so if the, if the middle school was, say, connected to the high school like it was in mine, um, or even if students travel on a bus from another school to visit the high school prior to coming up to the high school, um, we were given like a preview of let's say different departments within the school um, so that when we were picking like electives in our freshman year we kind of knew um, what departments were more of interest to us than others so this is that video could also be used in that presentation to upcoming eighth graders or upcoming ninth graders eighth graders then okay let me let me read Phrase just a little bit. That was a great answer for what I asked. I realized as you were giving your answer, I didn't maybe ask what I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think the way we set the uh, the assignment up in class and talk about it, it was marketing and recruitment. So other than recruiting, so on a marketing videos, side, other than to students, yeah. how would you change the video? What would you? How would you do things differently if it were going to a different audience? And of course, you'll have to tell me maybe who that audience is. Um, like so as far as if I were marketing it to somebody other than students, I wouldn't necessarily change the bulk of the of the slide, other than um, maybe just the joint ag part. Um, but if I I would just show that to whoever parents um, as to that if they think oh don't join ag class because you're just gonna learn about animals like no I'm teaching kids how to do other things more than just work with animals and plants like I'm teaching them to be um, lobbyists or salesmen or whatever. Check it in at my 
audience in the room? Yeah, that's the uh, What do you find hardest about doing this type of presentation? Is it the technology, the public speaking, and how would you improve? <laughs> um, all of the above. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, as far as public speaking, I mean, everybody gets those pre-presentation jitters. Um, but once you start doing it, you're fine. Um, technology is not my most favorite thing. But I've adapted to make it work. Does our online audience have any questions? I just asked one last time if anyone has any questions. So far, none of this. Understood. I think this will be your last question then, Katie. Okay. This is a question I'm very sincerely, really, really interested to hear. So I want you to think deeply before you respond. Okay? Okay. You do things for reasons. Mm hmm. It comes to be April the 23rd. 2017. You packed up your car, driven six hours away from here. Maybe it's only four, so can you make Depends on the weather. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hope, what do you hope, that your colleagues at Northwestern Hospital, that your students, that parents, that community says about Katie Smith as a student teacher? Well, I mean, I always hope to leave an impact, whether that be with the students, um, especially because Honeycuts and my strengths are so different from each other's. Um, I actually asked him for extensions on his animal science unit um, just because I have so much to say about animals and I just feel like the students would really benefit from learning um, what I have to say or teach them um, about animals. Um, so I hope maybe I can provide, fill that gap that might be missing since Honeycuts and our strengths are so different. But in that turn, I also really hope to learn a lot about plants because that's one of that's Honeycutt's strengths and a lot of his students also have that strength. Um, so I hope that I can take a lot from them and they'll see that I was not only there to teach but there to learn. Thank you. That's very well done. That was the first final question. There's going to be one more final. <laughs> oh. That's not fair. <laughs> well, that's not fair. <laughs> Katie, why do you want to be an ag teacher? I want to be an ag teacher because I want to give back to the program that gave so much to me. In short. Thank you, Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Round of applause for you. Appreciate your heartfelt response.